Good evening and welcome to episode 64 of Red True Diaries. I keep hearing, I'm not seeing any squirrels, but there have to be some squirrels and chipmunks around because I keep hearing things falling like that. Um, but it's fine. If an acorn falls on my head, it's all good. The sun is setting and as exhausted as I am, this is still one of the best parts of my day that I made time to do. More so just to hang out. I wasn't even sure I was going to record um, out in the woods today, but I wanted to come and eat part of my dinner here as opposed to in my house where I'm about to go and relax for the rest of the night. So last night's show, I did, I didn't mention how late it was. It was like 2.33 in the morning. Yeah, because I was playing music with a couple of friends and it was so much fun. It's just hard to stop the fun. But yeah, oh, I'm paying for it today in terms of lack of sleep. But because it's the first night that I didn't get much sleep in a while, um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I'm gonna sleep so well tonight. Oh, um, someone on their mountain bike. In any case, <sighs> that letter, if you didn't watch yesterday's episode, it's fine, but, um, I read this letter from Elizabeth Barrett Browning to her soon-to-be husband, Robert Browning. And one of the reasons I love them so much as a couple is because their story is a very unique one. They were both famous writers in England. I believe they're both from England. They ended up eloping and moving to Italy. And she, I believe was seven years older than him. I went into this a little bit in my episode the day before yesterday. But uh, today what, oh, mosquitoes. <laughs> They're out in full force right now. So, <sighs> one of the things I loved about Elizabeth Barrett Browning's letter to Robert yesterday was how she went into some detail about how people tend to idealize love and settle for what they feel is the best that they can get regarding love and relationships and partnerships and yet she and and that many people even wise people say that that's the norm and what you should do especially for women and um her day, I think in the late 1800s, early 1900s, needed, uh, they, they could, they, for their own survival and livelihood, they generally needed a man to provide for their house, for their well-being, um, if they weren't going to be on the street and destitute, because for the most part, many women couldn't work, and no one, very few people would hire them. So, uh, she was well aware of the gift that Robert gave her um, in loving. And not just not from Robert, from God. It's, it's just in how in some ways it humbled her as well as inspired her. And on certain levels she felt unworthy and it was just so so beautiful to read her words and her, you know, personal account of these things. <sighs> People like her and others who, um, when I say like her, people who live a very authentic life and give their best. I mean, she, she, she had a peculiar illness. I, I believe a lot of it was mental and emotional, but it did show itself physically to where she was bedridden for most of her life. And even once she did a loop with Robert, her health did improve, but you know she was never, say, as functional as um, your average being. And she even died, I think, in her mid 50s, maybe, definitely no later than mid 60s. Whereas I, know, I believe he lived another 20, 25 years. 
And I don't even think he remarried. Don't quote me on that, but I know his love for Elizabeth was so deep and amazing. <sighs> when my English professor last semester talked about love and we covered love in short stories and poetry, she was inclined, as well as others, to feel that certain poems were more fictionalized accounts of love. Even Shakespeare's famous sonnet, Let Me Not to the Marriage of True Minds, Admit Impediments. Um, and although I do believe that some are more embellished for the sake of effect, I also believe that divine divinely inspired poetry coming from a place of immense love <sighs> tends to come from people who have directly experienced it. It's hard to express those type of thoughts and feelings through those kinds of words. It's extremely poetic um, without having direct experience. I mean, for me, that's what I love to write poetry when I'm in love and when I'm not I can write a good poem so I'll show you now what this is on that's what I have this <laughs> my phone precariously placed right here so that's why it just fell because um I don't know maybe a gust of wind we're gonna see I'm gonna see if I can fasten it a little more securely okay that's good for now so when I write poetry, I tend to do it when I'm feeling in love and feeling that state of being more at one and in touch with the love that is everywhere here for us. And um, it takes focus, it takes devotion and a willingness to put actions to your words, in my case, especially as a writer. I, I love documenting these things and returning to these things later. They help me remember my greatest truths. And so I'm that much more of aware, aware of it when I read the works of other people and can get that sense of, ah, they have felt something comparable and this is their own way of expressing it. Whatever it is that you might feel drawn to, pay attention to it. Give it your time, your energy, your attention. Life can seem long at times, but it really is so short. Like one of um, Einstein's ways of describing the theory of relativity is to say 60 minutes, no, 60 seconds next to a hot stove can feel like 60 minutes, a whole hour. And an hour with a beautiful woman, or 60 minutes with a beautiful woman can seem like 60 seconds. Sorry, mosquitoes. That's why I'm going like this. So, There's also that quote that says, life is measured by the moments that take our breath away. Much of what I'm doing and trying to encourage, doing my best here to encourage myself as well as others, is to live a more enchanted life and put yourself in a position to be more likely than not to feel that sense of wonder and the peace, real deep, profound, stirring, quickening, as Rumi puts it, in some, like say with the sun, winter solstice, when the seed is deep within the earth and the sun's effects have begun life, even when total darkness appears to have taken root everywhere. It's all a cycle, circles and cycles. They each help us to appreciate the other.
other side. Different sides, same coin. So, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and listening. So much more to come. I look forward to sharing it all with you. I love you. May you have a wonderful time exploring for yourself. Mm.